how much matchup knowledge um, Utah actually has against Aegislash. And we'll get into this gameplay, see. Uh, Aegislash's gameplay typically. I feel like Aegislash controls uh, matchups against zoners really well. Not only that, but I feel like he can he can really play his own zone game and kind of fight back, especially especially with any kind of buff. Like Aegislash with the buff is terrifying. Yeah, I haven't played many. I don't think I've played any Aegislash really, but uh, from what I can see, Aegislash is very scary, especially with. Uh, the buffy right. attack buffy gets so Utah hard. doing a really good job there of punishing some of Cool Jake's options. And I think the biggest benefit we have here is that a lot of what um what Gardevoir has at that range especially can kinda of counter pierce. So he can try and take advantage of that. Especially if he ends up in shield mode. Like Cool Jake can't do anything to really go after Gardevoir if he's in shield. Nice counter pierce. Oh, yeah. I think he should have jumped up and uh, pressed R to float cancel first and then gone for the uh, JX. And he would have been okay there. Let me turn off my music so I can actually hear you and the game. Yeah. All right. So he kind of... Kind of wants to get... Yeah, I think he's cool trying Jake to prevent Cool Jake's burst. Or uh, at least getting crit from making a wrong decision. Cool Jake's really good at knowing what you, getting in your head, and knowing what you want to do. And he's definitely he's putting Utah in a rough position. Yeah, Utah definitely has to burst here. He's getting um, pressured way too much. But for, uh... Cool Jake's gonna be able to kind of fend off a lot of what's happening. He's. Oh, I'm not sure why he didn't block that, but I don't know why that didn't trigger. Oh, that killed. And he pulls it off. Nice comeback from Utah there. I'm not sure why Burst didn't go off, but I think if Burst had gone off, that would have actually been bad for Utah because it would have reset to neutral, and Cool Jake's neutral is really solid. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the distance, but I feel like that at that range is usually parks either way. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why it didn't interact the right way. But yeah, Utah definitely has to watch shield form because he can't do anything other than some kind of counter, counter pierce. I think that Cool Jake has these just frames of uh, he just dash on point though. Yeah, but Utah is showing a really good amount of patience there with blocking that. But he did get hit with that. He's going to have to avoid any kind of counter here. Oh, oh did he hit? That hit. All right. No, again, no bursts. Actual, no actual burst effect. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. I think he was relying on it to actually work. And the lingering hits of uh, 2x definitely catching him. He should have held on the block a little more. So we'll see if he's able to kind of bring this back. Um, cool Jake looks like, for the most part, he seems to be playing more of a ranged game unless he's yeah, like he, he can for sure get in. Yeah, he's playing a lot more patiently than I expect from Ninja Slash, and only going in when he's like, okay, I, I've got him now. Let me become one. Real Utah, quick. I think Utah definitely needs to watch uh, nice. Cool Jake's options. Nice counter there. Cool Jake just kind of fucking around. You yeah. can definitely he's, tell with that smile on his fun. face. I mean, also, I mean, that's a, the that's a big thing about this game. Just have fun. Definitely a solid setup. It makes it really difficult for Utah to kind of throw anything out with the, the lingering fog there. But this should connect. Phase shift. But Utah should definitely... There we go. I think he should try and watch for that. Ooh. As I was gonna say, I think he should definitely watch for side Y. Yep. Cool Jake's definitely going to have to burst here. Oh, oh Utah press the button. Yeah. I think that... Yeah, this is definitely going to kill. Yeah, with 9 HP left and all that still happens. 
He said Utah needs to try and focus on playing a little more patiently. If anything, maybe stick back a little further and just kind of throw out projectiles and see what he can try and bait from Cool Jake here. As much as he doesn't like to play, he's probably going to have to play the, the typical uh, zoning Gardevoir that... He's also going to have to definitely watch shield form if he doesn't have anything that can counter pierce. So I think if he sees that Cool Jake's in shield form at all, he he needs to try and throw out his, uh, I think it's 2A? I that throws the, uh, the, little... the the one across the ground that kind of yeah, pieces. Yeah. He definitely needs to watch this attack buff because hmm, I think uh, he might have been able to 8x. There we go. Good punish here. And he definitely needs it. It's definitely going to give him enough burst to kind of, I think, battle back. You think he tries to make a comeback with burst? Kind of has to, doesn't he? Yeah, but I don't think he will. I think he's trying to see if he can hold out for game th for round three. One good conversion here is enough to take the game of the round. There we go. See, that's what he needs to wait for more. He needs to be able to force these situations on Cool Jake. Well, the okay, but he is throwing it out. He just doesn't want to have to deal with any of Aegislash's stuff at range. But, all right, Cool Jake's not going to punish. Risky, and I think he threw something out. Wow, oh, wow, that actually worked! I didn't know that's how that worked. Okay. <laughs> Smile from Utah there. I don't think he even expected that yeah, to work. I, I honestly expected uh, the burst to go through on Rayon at some point. But good on Utah. He that was definitely a really solid choice for him to, to be able to kind of throw that out and manage to sneak out that win there. So we'll see how these two kind of play their neutral here. Ooh. So I know Utah wanted to come down off the ground, but I think he should have waited and thrown out a jump bar to keep himself in the air just a little longer to avoid the counter attack. Right. But uh, he's holding on to this lead really yeah. well. He's doing a good job of keeping Cool Jake out. But it. like I said, I think he definitely needs to keep, uh, maybe it's 2x, whatever the, the grounded uh, hit is that counter pierces. I definitely think he needs to keep that out if he can. Yeah, I don't remember what move it is. Because I don't think Aegis Last can really approach it. Oh, that messed him up. Yeah, that's probably just going to push Aegis Slash away. Make it a little bit of space. Ooh, really close breaking shield. If he can get this break. No, he gets his burst out first. I was going to say, if he could snag the break, then he could have. Ooh, oh, that stops the burst! Oh gosh. If he could have at least, you know, kept him from bursting, he would have been fine. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Utah managing to secure a win on Cool Jake. Good this makes us tied one to one on the set. Definitely, I feel like this is definitely going to be something good for Utah because um, any win he can snag over Cool Jake will definitely help with his uh, morale overall. Because right. Cool Jake's obviously one of our better players here. This is probably our best player here in the scene. I know Utah, I think, was our number one on our last PR, but Cool Jake still kind of holds that, like, toughest player to beat. And I yeah. see Cool Jake is switching up to another character that will probably have definitely an easier time getting in on Gardevoir. And I feel like with him being... Uh, with him having uh, KFC Silver as his training partner, he knows... How to how to really maneuver, um, how to maneuver Blazing in the way he needs to. Yeah, Utah mostly gets his uh, placement on PR mostly because he just goes to more events. Uh, but Cool Jake has a very good, uh, solid fundamental about the game and how. Yeah. Cool Jake understands a lot, and it's gonna make it really rough, especially with uh, with uh, just Bird in general. But does a really good job of punishing the flip kick. So we'll see what what he can do. I feel like he needs to actually try and keep Blaziken from getting in if he can afford it. Yeah. Really good, really good jump X. The good thing about this matchup is even though Gardevoir should jump be keeping in. Blaziken out of uh, range, uh, Utah's Gardevoir specifically, uh, he likes to play up close, so he knows what to, he does. He doesn't have to panic when Gar Blaziken does eventually get in. Yeah, but, but that there. grab definitely gonna yeah, snag it.
So we'll see if Yuzo can kind of adjust his game plan, watch how Cool Dick tries to approach, um, see if there's any options that he can use to kind of stuff that out. Ooh. Cool Dick definitely though, really snagging that opportunity to just keep pressure on Utah and not really give him a chance to breathe, which is definitely helping. Yeah, Cool Jake's neutral is just insane sometimes. Ooh, he's gonna get punished. He really needs to watch. Burst here. Yep. Yeah. And burst back. All good, our team stays in the way, but that speed buff is gonna Ooh, Oh, Cool Jake managed to snag the grab on Utah. Let's see what Utah can do here in response. No, he catches him on the vulnerable frames and brings it up. 2-1, Cool Jake's favor, match point. Utah's definitely going to have to try and adjust his gameplay a little more. Um, yeah, I saw that Pokemon. But. I don't know if... Is he going to go... Okay, he's going to stay, but he might switch support. up support. Especially against Blaziken, I really feel like Rotom does a really good job of stepping up first, but he's, he's going to choose to go with the, the vulnerable, most likely Umbreon. Yeah. For the matchup. Sort of another tool to keep Blaziken out. Yeah, this definitely is going to be a good support choice to help him. Um, oh, he's going with Espeon. To definitely clear up some pressure that uh, Blaziken likes to put out. I also think he's he's trying to predict a jump at uh, a jump from Cool Jake a little too much, but Cool Jake misses a grab. I'm not sure why. He went for a grab, but Jay, Jay is definitely going to catch that. And this definitely sets up. Yep. Oftentimes you'll see Blazing will go for that reset because it makes it really safe. Even if they catch a counter attack, they're far enough away that they don't have to worry about a punish too much. Yeah. Ooh. Brave Birds hurts. Um, Utah should definitely look for opportunities to to draw out uh, an 8Y, especially against Blaziken. It's a lot of his approaches. Most of his moves, barring um, uh, 6A into like his Flurbit's punch, will lead to opportunities where Utah should be able to take advantage of it. Nice there we go. Now, uh, stick with Espeon as you actually go Umbreon here. Um, yeah, he's, I feel like he's going to stick with Espeon because he needs that extra... I feel like he thinks he needs that extra health to kind of handle the match. Ooh. Cool Jake definitely taking advantage of Utah um, since he thought... Ooh, Utah doing a really good job turning this around, though. I think Cool Jake thought Utah was going to try and fight him more uh, up close. Utah's mostly just trying to keep Cool Jake away. So, like, right there, would have these would be good opportunities to throw out. Um, other than the Fire Punch, would be good opportunity to throw out uh, 8Y. See? Because Blaziken really... Blaziken kind of suffers from being able to approach, and most of his approaches come from the air. Yeah. All of his approaches take you off the ground, and that means that, you know, you're going to be uh, upper body invincible. And now he's got the speed buff, so he's going to try and see what he can kind of take advantage of. This is very scary for you. Ooh, there's a reset opportunity. No. Oh, Gets himself punished. Be round All Two right. Cool Utah's definitely, Utah definitely has to uh, try and win this next round. This is match point for Cool Jake. And I, I, I think if... if Utah manages to pull off this win here. We'll see Cool Jake switch characters in the last the round. From, from Utah now. There we go. There we smart, go. smart choice. Definitely going to kind of stuff that, uh, draining that burst, which is a really solid thing that he needs. And he does a really good job converting. He just needs to not lose his cool here and just hold it. He has a really solid advantage. He, there, we there we go. Manages to snag it from Cool Jake. He needs to work on keeping Cool Jake out of there, but it's Cool Jake changing characters here is yeah. Blaziken. Utah did a really good job. All of all of his choices were really smart. He managed to keep uh, Blaziken from doing what Blaziken does and get in and really dominate up close. 
So we'll see what uh, Cool Jake does here on the counter pick. I think we might see a character switch from from Cool Jake, maybe back to uh, maybe back to Aegis Last, maybe over to Blastoise. Oh, Empoleon. Okay. I haven't seen Empoleon so, since No Shark. Empoleon definitely. I don't think he wins the matchup, but I think he does a lot to get in and punish any buttons that uh, Utah might throw out with Gardevoir. So we'll see if that's kind of what he plans on trying to do. Um, let's. We can't see. Obviously, we don't know what support he picked. But I feel like it would be Whims got Jirachi. No, Snivy. Okay. All right, solid start already. Definitely gonna see Utah try to try to hold an advantage here against them. We'll have to watch Jay since Jay counter pierces. Yeah, Jay's just basic knowledge yeah. of all the stealing is really helping him. Stewing's a really solid choice, but I definitely think this is another character we don't see too often in our scene here, so I'm not sure how much matchup knowledge Utah really has against the character. Yeah, the only Empoleon we see around, or we used to see around here, was uh, No Shark. But uh, I don't know how how much matchup knowledge he got from him. No, Utah definitely doing a really good job maintaining that advantage he had there, but Cool Jake definitely going to see ADC and get in there with, like grab. Um, Utah, I feel like he's going to have to be a little more careful with some of the buttons he presses in field. And Polyon's forward wide does a really good job of traveling and punishing. Especially at max range. And yeah, Paul is just scary when he's trying to get in. Yeah. Polyon definitely catching those vulnerable frames there as well. His damage output's really good. And I feel like this might get him punished. No, here we go. Bringing it back, Utah might be able to... Utah's afraid. He he's he's afraid, he, he's of, the afraid burst. of the burst. He's jumping a lot. It's getting him, getting him off it's for it. And it's getting him in trouble for it. I think okay, right, there we go. There we that go. was really smart, but I think he should he's respecting the burst a little too much. Yeah. I think he would be just as well backdashing in some of these situations. Ooh, definitely gonna catch Cool Jake there. I don't think Cool Jake was actually expecting a burst, because I think he felt he had the advantage. Uh, over cool uh, over Utah, I think he thought Utah wouldn't dare press any buttons against him, especially at that close. But this is Utah we're talking about. He likes his close range Gardevoir. Yeah, but this is definitely definitely a tough situation for Utah. Oh, is that kind of gonna do it? Uh oh, no, no this one close, but it's definitely gonna bring it tight. I actually is expected Cool Dick to grab oh. there. Keep him out. Let's see what Utah can do. How can he hold him? He's gonna throw out that block. No. Nice, he... nice Umbreon. To minimize the damage. Wake up. Can he punish? Oh. No. Steel wing, I believe. That is the three-two. Yeah, I, I think that was a jump canceled 